All right, we are back. We are going to read chapter 19 of Two Dogs in a Trench Coat Go to School. Um, in the last chapter, Stuart and the dogs decided to not change anything about Stuart's presentation because he thought that would be cheating. And I think that's really important to talk about that Stuart did the right thing um, and he realized what he would have done would have been wrong. And so he really showed integrity in that moment. So let's see what happens in chapter 19. The dogs managed not to worry much about squirrels until the next morning. Oh, the dogs managed not to worry much about squirrels the next morning either. They weren't, there weren't any squirrels in the backyard. And Stuart was so happy and relaxed, he hummed a tune on the way to school. It's a good thing we came to school and enrolled as a human, said Waldo. I like the part about how we got a pile, we get a pile of meat for lunch every day, said Sassy. We never used to get lunch before. Why didn't we get lunch? The humans eat every nine minutes and we only get breakfast and dinner. Sometimes you get cookies, said Stuart, for snacks. Snack cookies are good, said Waldo. Meat cookies are even better, said Sassy. Let's not complain right now, said Waldo. Everything is going pretty well. We saved Stuart from the evil overload. What evil overload exactly, said Stuart. <gasps> the information sheet, said Waldo. Oh yeah, that evil overload. And now our boy is humming and will do a very important educational lecture about squirrels today to his classmates. And I bet he's going to impress Mrs. Tui. Do you think if he'll impress her, she'll give us a cookie? Said Sassy. Oh, I sure hope so, said Waldo. Salty sat at their desk while Stuart made sure he had everything ready for his presentation. Did you bring fireworks? Waldo whispered to Sassy. Um, I don't think so, but this trench coat has a lot of pockets. Why? I just want Stuart's presentation to be spectacular, said Waldo. So many of the presentations were spectacular. Some of them were ludicrous, said Sassy. Two were boring, some were entertaining. One had an eruption. The volcano didn't erupt like it was supposed to. <laughs> I was talking about the talking baby. Oh, right. Anyway, I think fireworks would be spectacular. We'll have to rely on Stuart to make the presentation spectacular all on his own. I guess. I don't think fireworks would be safe in school either. But the dogs had to wait. Mrs. Tui made everyone do math work, reading work, and spelling work before it was time for Stuart to give his presentation. Stuart is smelling more, ner more nervous with every passing minute, said Waldo. I know, said Sassy. This is like sitting next to a chihuahua. Not all chihuahuas are nervous, said Waldo. Remember Buster? Was that the tiny dog who used to punch me in the face? <laughs> yeah. That dog was feisty. Yeah. Do you think Stuart is feisty? Maybe. Now you smell nervous. I want Stuart to win. Is it a competition? Will there be a winner? Isn't there always? <laughs> Mrs. Tui clapped her hands. Finish up your spelling dioramas and let's get ready to hear our last presentation. Boy, all those hot glue guns you're using sure made it warm in here. Whew, I'm gonna open a window. She slid three of the classroom windows open and then nodded at Stuart. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Stuart brought the information sheet to Mrs. Tui and handed it to her. He carried his log to the front of the room. He kept the squirrel dog toy in his tote bag. He was going to bring it out at just the right moment. He wanted to create some surprise. Meanwhile, Waddle sensed a movement out the window and smelled a telltale scent wafting through the screen. Sassy <laughs> sniffed it too. Her body tensed, a low growl <sighs> starting in her throat. Waddle stomped on her head to get her to shut up. Hey, 
she said, ow. I wonder what it is that they are smelling outside. Could it be a squirrel? Everything okay, Salty? Said Mrs. Chewy. Oh, my stomach is grumbling. I think I need to go get my midday meat pile. Or, yeah, I need to go out the doggy door. Pardon? Said Mrs. Chewy. The bath place. I mean, I need to go to the room of bathing, but where you can't actually take a bath. The bathroom? I just said that. Are you sure? I'm very sure. <laughs> Mrs. Stewie gave Salty the hall pass and the dogs ran out of the room, past the bathroom and out of the door. They instinctively broke apart of the trench coat. They ran fast and low, knowing they'd, come, they'd cover more ground as two dogs until they made it to the base of a big oak tree, circling. There he is, said Waldo. I see him, I see him, said Sassy. The squirrel was so totally getting sent up to Squirrel Town. Oh, so it was a squirrel they sensed. Are you ready, said Waldo. I've never been more ready, said Sassy. Let's do this, this squirrel is going down. The squirrel was, in fact, going up, farther up the tree. The dog circled at the base of the trunk, growling, <sighs> until Waddle said, now, and then they began to bark. The squirrel fluffed his tail at them. I'm going to jump on your shoulders, then we'll be taller and we can reach him. Waddle climbed onto Sassy, which did make him taller, but he was still about 15 feet shorter than the squirrel. Waddle stretched as high as he could. Oh, almost, he said, reaching, gritting his teeth. I've almost got him. Sassy looked up. I don't think you're using the word almost correctly. Waldo shifted. Hey, Stuart is giving his presentation. We're missing it. But, but, the squirrel. I know. I don't know what to do. What's Stuart saying? Shh, something about squirrels being able to climb up and down trees because of their toes. What else? I think he's showing them how the bark in a tree is easy for a squirrel's toes to grip. Should we go back in? Let's bark some more and then go back in. So they went back to barking and the squirrel continued his nonchalant and sinister tail fluffing. The squirrel tauntingly climbed a few feet back down the tree, getting closer, which made the dogs bark even more. a minute, they heard Mrs. Chewy say. I'm going to close these windows so those darn dogs aren't so disruptive. The squirrel said, ch -ch 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 -ch. Mrs. Chewy closed one window. The squirrel fluffed his tail as he ran up the tree and out on a branch. Mrs. Chewy closed another window. The dogs started jumping as far as they could up the tree. The squirrel gave one last flourishing fluff ran down the branch and leapt, flying through the air, landing on the edge of the last open window. The squirrel used his amazingly grippy toes and claws to dislodge the screen and jump into the classroom. Holy cats, said Waddle. Did that just happen? We gotta get back in there. Come on. They quickly reassembled themselves in the trench coat and then realized they were locked out of the school and had to go around to the front door to get buzzed in. Hello, said Dottie. Dottie, hello, it's Salty from Liver, Ohio. We are locked out of this fine school. The door opened. What are you doing out there, said Dottie. You shouldn't be outside by yourself. Were you running away? I was not, I was not running away. I was running toward. Thank you for letting me inside. I have to go. I have learning to do. You need to fill out this unauthorized outside access form, said Dottie. You sure do love your forms here. What? There were not as many forms to fill out in Liver, Ohio. And I'll get you a clipboard. But it's not my birthday. What? 
And if it was, I would want a meatball, not a clipboard. But goodbye. I have learning to do. Sassy ran down the hall before Dottie could do anything. <laughs> that is the end of chapter 19. We have two more chapters left, so stay tuned for those. Bye, guys.